Hi, I'm Stu. Welcome back to another video tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at Adobe's new iPad and iPhone app called Premiere. So Premiere is going to be a replacement for Adobe Rush, I think. And it's got the ability for you to start an edit here on your iPad or on your iPhone and then take it into Adobe Premiere if you've got that. Which I actually do have Premiere and I do sometimes dip into this for features that quite frankly LumaFusion are never going to put in. Let's see how we go. I'm in the main timeline just now. Let's go back to the home window. So we've got new from photo library, new from files, new blank project, extract audio, just obviously some kind of template, add captions, generate image, image to video, and expand image. The last three I have access to anyway through Adobe Firefly and also package that I pay for with Adobe, which happens to be the complete suite, which in the interest of transparency, I got because my son is still in full-time education. He needs to use quite a lot of these apps. So I kind of lean into a couple of the apps, not many, but a couple. So let's just do new from photo library, scan down. I've still got the Lancia Delta footage. So let's take a few of those clips. There's our little squirrel. I'll have that. Interior of the car, long shot, overhead shot, and I think that's a passing shot. So let's do next. Okay, so pulled the clips in quite quickly, but these are not big clips. I mean, one, they're only between five and eight seconds long, some of them, and two, they're not even 4K because I didn't see the point. Oh, okay, that's a bit noisy. I didn't see the point of generating 4K footage for a training video. Yeah, that's okay. So obviously if we tap on the clip, we've got the option to make adjustments, split. Now here's an interesting thing. Will they have a keyboard shortcut for splitting? Yep, they do. It's C and then Command Z. So that, that I like the fact they've got keyboard shortcuts. You know, I'm a big fan of them on the iPad. We've got replace clip, move up. Now what does that do? Oh, that moves up onto the next line, next layer. So that's not a bad feature. Enhanced speech. I'm guessing that's the same as the Adobe podcast feature where you can go in and enhance the speech pretty much for free, I think. Or at least you have a certain amount you can do for free each day. So I'm assuming that's what that is. Extract audio. Yeah, okay. So we could go in and dial down the volume. Let's have a listen. And I'm assuming audio fade is yeah, fade in, fade out. These are not bad features, but they're nothing groundbreaking, nothing new. Got a little squirrel here. Again, let's highlight that clip. We've got remove background. And that could be interesting. Okay, let's see what that does. Creating a people mask, even though it's a squirrel. That's got potential. Obviously, a squirrel is quite a difficult thing to do anyway. So we'll give them a pass on that one. Looks, well, what we got? None, vivid, dramatic, warm, sunset, twilight, vintage film, sepia film, noir film. Oofed. The gnarl's quite intense. Sunset. Again. Good job they've got an intensity slider because they're quite in your face. You're going to be bringing them down at about 20-30%. Dramatic. And none. Okay, so we know what's going on there. Again, I like to see my waveforms down, so let's extract the audio. I mean, that's fast enough. Let's just dial the audio right the way down. So there's no pans, there's no options for doing anything of any great creativity in the app at the moment. We've got an option for soundtracks, sound effects, generate sound effect. I mean, that's quite good that you can actually generate a sound effect. So for example, birds chirping in a forest and you can actually perform the, the sound. Okay, you won't be doing that. Okay, so generate. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, you can get four choices. Fair enough. I mean, that's something you can do in 11 Labs, but obviously you've got to pay for a subscription for that. So if you want to use that on a regular basis, it may possibly be worth the £8 a month. And by the way, again, in the interest of full disclosure, I have paid for the subscription, at least for this month. So what you're looking at here is the full version with all the bells and whistles. I can pop that down there. So for example, our squirrel, we could move our chirping birds along here. 
quite like how that snapped in. Totally inappropriate, but we get the idea. And then, yep, back key does deleting, which is good. Then we're going down a straight here. Oh, we're going backwards. So well, that's a good time to see if we've got reverse footage. That was fast. Okay, quite like that. There's the footage going forwards now. Got the ability to freeze. Now, how did that go about doing that? Did that give us a general? Yep, it's frozen for four seconds by the looks of things. And then continues. It's not bad. Don't mind that. I notice we haven't got sort of any kind of layer controls in terms of if I make a duplicate of that freeze frame, move it on up, the snapping's quite nice. And then we take that. There's no layer blending or anything that I can see. You can flip the clip, which is fair enough. Photo motion, so we can do a pan zoom. Let's see what that is. Ah, okay, that's just a basic sort of Ken Burns style transition. Again, something that LumaFusion can quite happily handle, no problem at all. So we'll just delete that again. Titles and captions, let's have a quick look at that. So we want to add a title. Title, here we go. So, Lancia Delta, add that. Gives us a kind of serif font. Ooh, what we got? Wow, that's not a big choice. This is actually the first time I've been in here at all. Okay, that's boring. Okay, let's go to that one. Well, it's not so bad looking, but again, these are really basic. You can obviously change the fonts. You can sit down. You've got the full Adobe Stock library effectively. And that looks as if it kind of gives you a bit of a drop shadow automatically. Colour. So you can change the colour. But there's no way to change the drop shadow or make any movements with it. And for Adobe, that's really poor layout. That's just within the bounding box that you're working with. Text width. You can double tap on it to adjust it. Go back into style, layout. All right, okay. It's doing that. I don't like that at all. Okay, that's useless. Right, so basic titles. Fair enough. You do have an option to animate. And this is really poor, to be honest with you. I mean, fade, slide, you haven't even got the option for rotate. Slide intro, slide outro. Okay, let's see what it does. A fadey slide, and then back out again. And that sucks. This is very underwhelming, I have to say. I expected an awful lot more. I mean, considering I believe in Adobe Rush, and I'm going to do another video about Rush, because I haven't looked at it in literally a couple of years. They've got quite cool animated titles and stuff like that. It's really poor. They haven't tapped into some of the more creative features within Premiere. Now, I know they're going to add to the software, but let's face it, you're not going to pay £8 a month if you haven't got a fully featured bit of kit. Let's have a look at the transitions now. Not much better. We've got a bar swipe, crossfade, fade to black, flash, slide and wipe. Well, let's do the flash, because you know me likes a flash. Make it nice and short. And let's see how it goes. Oh, don't like the shape of that. Nope. Okay, so that sucks. Fade to black. It's not so bad, but it's nothing new. And considering what you can get in CapCut, although I've completely stopped using CapCut now because of their terms and the fact that they want to own your intellectual property, that's pretty poor. Okay, let's try a bar swipe. And we'll just move that title a wee bit further along. Okay, let's play it through. Oh, that's awful. No, not keen on those. Now, you have got the option of opacity, which again is literally just opacity. Right, music and audio. Let's have a look at this. Soundtracks. Again, you can get free music from YouTube. So is it worth £8? No. Okay, we'll do dance. Let's see what it can... Okay, that's a bit kind of daft punk. Let's see how long it takes to download and add to that. By tapping plus, you're agreeing to... Oh, I see a license code. Okay, that's interesting. Do you know what that means? That means that if you do not embed that into your YouTube video or whatever you're going to be hosting your video, there's a high likelihood you're going to get slapped with a copyright strike initially, and then you've got to prove that you have a license to use the piece of music, which is not the end of the world, but it is obviously going to, you know, the likes of myself, if I'm having to go in and sort out copyright claims all the time for the two or three videos I do a week, then that's a pain in the neck. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, it does have these features. 
captions. Let's go back into that and do captions. Create from all speech. So that looks automated. So we can't really do anything with that there just now because I don't have a piece recorded. I mean, that's another good point. Can you record? That must be in the audio section. Voice over. There we go. So let's see how this goes. Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Stu and I am trying out the new Adobe Premiere for iPhone and iPad, which currently sucks. So let's see how it goes. Okay, there's our voiceover. We'll take it to a clean bit of footage. Get rid of that. There we go. Two, one. Hi, I'm Stu and I am trying out the new Adobe Premiere for iPhone and iPad, which currently sucks. Now, that's actually not a bad voiceover, but I should say I've got a wireless lavalier mic, a newer wireless mic on, so that's obviously going to improve the audio somewhat. You've got the option to enhance speech. So let's switch that on. Now my normal setting is 85 and knock down the background noise. And it says processing. And see how long that takes to do its thing. Oh, quite quick, okay. So at the same time as it would take, again, in the free version, or the version at least I've got as part of my suite. Two, one. Hi, I'm Stu, and I am trying out the new Adobe Premiere for iPhone and iPad, which currently sucks. <laughs> so let's we'll try and pinch and zoom in, which we can do relatively well. And again, I can go in and remove blank space, but you're having to manually move stuff along, which kind of end up doing in LumaFusion as well. So that's not the end of the earth, but there are other ways of making it snap automatically. For iPhone and iPad, which currently sucks. So let's see how it goes. It's not bad. Yeah, the voiceover thing's good. So I don't know which much more that we can actually sort of look at. Let's have a look at the end. Fade out. That is literally the last option for the transition. And you can increase the duration. I prefer Lumer Fusion as option to be able to drag the length. Maybe it's just because I'm used to that. So do Luma Touch and the guys there have much to worry about at the moment? I would say no. And I would say they're probably good for the next two or three years. Let's just go into this every second. See what the adjustments are like. I mean, that's just basic color grading tools. Not dissimilar to what Luma Fusion is. It's presented in a different way. You know, it's nothing exciting. We can adjust the speed, which I guarantee you'll not be with optical flow. Yeah, jittery as can be. It's okay for social media, but Waylo, Vlo, Kinemaster, the list is endless in terms of apps that do way more than what Adobe Premiere does. So I would say, overall, pretty disappointing for our new app, and I really don't see much in the way of features that I can't get either for free, I don't already have, or I just wouldn't use anyway. I think we'll be sticking with LumaFusion, guys. So there we go. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this waffle on today about Adobe Premiere, just a sort of first look, give it a like and share, and I will catch you on the next one. See you later.